All right, so here I have two of the best gaming monitors that you can currently buy. Both made by Asus, both are 27 inches, but this one is OLED and this one is IPS. The OLED is also 240 hertz, while this one is 360. Now I've tested them out pretty extensively, played a bunch of hours on them, and today I just wanna share my overall thoughts on them. You know, how they differ, how they kind of feel a little bit different to play on, and also which one I'm gonna be using moving forward. Now the OLED that I've been using mostly is the one that I've first reviewed, that's the LG 27 GR9. 95QE, but the one that I'll be talking about mostly in this video is the new ASUS PG27AQDM. Basically, it's the exact same panel, same response times, very similar overshoot, although the ASUS is slightly better. The image quality also looks identical to the LG at the same settings, but the new ASUS OLED does get noticeably brighter. While the LG tops out at around 210 nits with the new firmware update, the ASUS can reach just under 250. Now, personally, I didn't have a huge problem with the brightness on the LG. Uh, I found myself using it at about 85 to 90%. At the same time, I don't like gaming on a super bright display. It kind of wears out my eyes really quickly. And my gaming setup is not that bright, to be honest. But for those who do want that extra brightness, it is definitely a nice boost from the ASUS. That extra 40 nits of brightness is actually pretty noticeable. The color accuracy on the ASUS is also much better out of the box. The designs are also quite different visually as well. It just really depends on what you prefer. But other than that, it's the same panel. And aside from the brightness and stock colors, it's basically the same experience. So the ASUS is a superior package for this panel. It is the better monitor, mostly because it gets brighter, but it is, however, slightly more expensive. What I really want to talk about today, though, is OLED versus IPS, specifically these two monitors from ASUS right here. And it is a tough decision. Like, these are extremely top-tier gaming monitors. I can see why I'm getting a bunch of questions about them, but they're both kind of top-tier in their own ways. And I mean, we've got to start off with the OLED's image quality. And I know I said it in the review of the LG, but it's only fair that I mention it again. The image that you get out of the OLED is just simply amazing. It's not even about those deep inky blacks, which you've probably heard time and time again. I'd actually say it's mostly the mid-range in terms of contrast that I enjoy most about the OLED. That's where you really get the separation, you know, compared to IPS. Like in some areas where the IPS can look muddy or hazy, the OLED looks punchy and more 3D. And yeah, in my opinion, that's the area of contrast which has the most impact when it comes to gaming, visibility and stuff like that. Uh, it has this kind of unfiltered look to it, like you can reach out and grab what you're seeing. IPS, on the other hand, you definitely feel like you're looking at a screen. Now look, in isolation, the IPS still looks pretty good on its own, uh, and certainly by high refresh rate gaming monitor standards, it's actually one of the best. But the second you put it next to the OLED, you can really see the difference. But now let's talk about what these monitors actually feel like to play on. You know, how does the difference in ghosting feel? What is the difference like in terms of the refresh rate and the response times, and ultimately, which one just feels the fastest to play on. Now, I like competitive games. Uh, Overwatch 2, for example, is just like the only thing that I've been playing at the moment. And I've got to say, it's like the perfect game to stress test and test out these displays. And yeah, 360 hertz IPS versus 240 hertz OLED, they do feel different. So the response times of these monitors are very different. The OLED is virtually instant, 0.1 milliseconds, whereas the IPS sits at around one and a half. Now, this value represents how fast the pixels can switch to a new color. This isn't related to refresh rate or input lag or anything like that. It's purely how long that pixel transition takes. Here's a graph basically showing what I mean. This is real data of the PG27 AQN on the left and the 27 AQDM OLED on the right, both switching from black to gray. The OLED switches virtually instantly, whereas the IPS takes 1.5 milliseconds. Again, this is the pixel response time. And as always, faster is better. You can also see that the IPS has quite a bit of overshoot for this particular transition, whereas the OLED has none at all. So that would result in what we know as artifacting or inverse ghosting. So zero millisecond response times, what does that mean in practice? Well, the 240Hz OLED, because the pixels can switch to a new color virtually instantly, that means you have basically no ghosting at all, like extremely minimal ghosting. That means that every new frame, you're basically just seeing that new clean frame. You're not seeing pixels trying to kind of switch color in time from previous frames. In other words, ghosting, which you do actually still see on the IPS, despite that still having a really fast response time of 1.5 milliseconds. Really important to note though, zero ghosting does not mean zero motion blur. When we're talking about ghosting, we're purely talking about whether there are pixels lagging behind in the current frame. If you were to take a snapshot in time, for example, or 
record some super high speed footage, could you see previous frames in the current frame? If you can, that's ghosting. And as you can see in these examples, the 360Hz IPS clearly has more ghosting than the 240Hz OLED. But when we're talking about motion blur, we're also additionally talking about how your eyes track and interpret that motion on screen and kind of decipher this series of still images, which is what you're seeing right now. So for example, think of a perfect OLED panel with zero millisecond response times, but at just 60 hertz. The monitor would be delivering perfect frames one by one, and effectively, there would be no ghosting. You know, we could take a snapshot in time of any frame and it would look perfect. But as your eyes track the images, the perceived motion blur would actually be terrible. So again, zero ghosting technically, perfect frames, but you still see massive blur. This is due to the way that monitors sample and hold each frame and how your eyes interpret that. Blurbusters.com has some extremely good explanations on how this works. We could go a lot deeper, but in a nutshell, it explains why our eyes still see motion blur even on a lightning quick 240Hz OLED. The only way to overcome this really is with higher refresh rates or with backlight strobing techniques like DIAC or ULMB. With higher refresh rates, the sample and hold effect isn't as bad, and with backlight strobing, you're somewhat overcoming it altogether. So then, comparing 360Hz IPS and the 240Hz OLED, if we take a snapshot of what the panels are doing on this moving UFO test, we can actually see that the IPS does in fact have more ghosting. I mean, the OLED on the other hand is pretty much perfect. But when we move the camera to track the image with the correct shutter speed mimicking what you would actually see with your eyes as you track the image, the motion blur that you'd see and experience on either panel is actually very similar. So as far as the 240Hz OLED is concerned, it's actually as good as a 240Hz OLED can ever get. I mean, we have 0.1 millisecond response times, 0% overshoot, insane image quality. I mean, again, at 240Hz, we really can't go much further than what we have here. So as a 240Hz monitor, it's like as good as it's ever gonna get. Again, the only thing missing for sweaty gamers like myself is a backlight strobing implementation. That would help make the panel look even smoother, but these panels don't really have the brightness budget to do that. So if we're comparing these two monitors both at 240Hz, I would personally take the OLED. I mean, both pixel ghosting and eye tracking motion blur are lower. And again, that better image quality does lead to a slightly clearer experience. But at 360Hz, that's where the 27 AQM uh, will be preferred for those that want a smoother experience. You know, this is one of the few monitors on the market where you can actually toggle up to 360 hertz and actually tell that you're getting a superior experience. Like you can see that you are getting those extra frames. And I've said it before, you know, it's not a huge difference. The difference between 240 and 360 will never be huge. After all, we're comparing it against the best 240 hertz monitor on the market, but it's a difference nonetheless. And if you're really chasing smoothness, which realistically is what most people want out of a fast competitive monitor, then the 27 AQN is the slightly better pick. It's also the better choice if you game in a seriously bright room. Like, I don't know, if you game outside, for example, in the sun, this might be actually a viable solution. It's basically the brightest monitor that I've tested. It also has NVIDIA's G-Sync and Reflex module, as well as a pretty cool 25-inch mode for those who struggle to use the 27-inch display. As for what I'll be using moving forward, well, it's actually the OLED. You know, I've just been spoiled by the image quality of this thing, making it really hard to go back. And for for me at least, I find myself enjoying that aspect more than the extra bump in smoothness from the 360Hz IPS. And at the end of the day, OLED is the way forward for gaming monitors. I'm super excited to see what these things look like when they reach 360Hz and even 480Hz in the not too distant future. It is also the better choice if you play more single player oriented games, especially with HDR. Both the ASUS and the LG OLED have extremely good HDR capabilities. Now in terms of burn in on the OLED, I've used the LG for two months and the the Asus for one month and you know I've played hundreds of hours on these monitors but there's just no burn-in at all to report. I really think it's going to take at least a year and a half of super heavy borderline abnormal abusive use to start seeing anything. I think with mixed use regular pixel cleaning you should be okay but we can only wait and see and I'll be sure to report anything if I see it. The only other reason not to get the OLED is due to the weird sub pixel layout which can make reading text a little annoying and slightly blurry. To be honest, it really hasn't bothered me that much for occasional desktop use and browsing, but if this is gonna be your only desktop monitor and you also use it for a lot of reading and a lot of typing, it's just not the best choice. So if you're interested in picking them up, I will leave them linked down below, uh, as well as some other recommendations as well if you're looking for something a little bit cheaper because yeah, these are pretty expensive to be honest. Otherwise, hopefully you all enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next one.